I'm Mark Doty, and I'm here with Guitar Center at Moogfest 2019, and they've asked me to talk a little bit about making lead sounds. Now, as a guy who typically plays vintage analog synthesizers, part of the excitement of vintage analog synthesizers back when they were new was that you had these like interesting timbres, like a sawtooth wave. Back then, it was really exciting to have this unnatural electronic tone to play with. These days, using one of these synths and you're trying to do a lead, it's kind of more interesting and more aurally exciting to have a sound that is more compelling as a lead than simply a wave shape. I was on the way to here and there was a train whose horn was stuck on and I was walking by it and it was just like a half diminished chord that was just playing, but it was really beautiful and interesting and I was thinking, why is that so interesting? And it was because of the variation in the amplitude and the frequency and the harmonic content of the sound that made it sort of washy and interesting and changing over time. So that's kind of what we're looking for in a great lead sound is to have like interest. So today I have in front of me the Moog Grandmother, which will make things not only easy, but really nice sounding. So let's dig in. First of all, synthesizers come with really immediate ways to make changes like this. And we're going to focus on the oscillator right now. For example, if we want to have pulse width modulation, which is changing the duty cycle of the square wave, it will immediately add a sort of chorusing effect to the sound. <laughs> And immediately you can hear like there's some motion, there's some interesting things going on. So that's a way to really quickly create some interest in your sound. Also, if you have more than one oscillator, you can certainly add other oscillators. Okay, let's get I have both of these oscillators at the same frequency in the same octave range, because if I do that, then if I detune one of them, there's going to be this beating effect that's generated by these two oscillators being at slightly different frequencies. And immediately again, you have something that's more interesting than just a straight wave shape. And of course, if we put these on square waves, you can also add pulse width modulation on top of that. And immediately, again, you've got something way more interesting to work with. Another thing you can focus on, something that I really love to do, and it's kind of obnoxious, on this particular synthesizer, we have the opportunity for three different oscillators. Now, you may feel compelled to just like stack these oscillators on top of each other and create these big sounds. <laughs> And that's nice, but you're actually just adding a lot of amplitude to what you're doing. You're making a really sort of obtrusive thing when you start stacking a lot of oscillators on top of each other. For example, like this. Let's get the third oscillator going. Okay, now we have three oscillators stacked on top of each other, and while there is a little bit of beating in there because this is an analog synthesizer, still it's kind of a really obtrusive sound. But what would happen if you chose, for example, several different wave shapes for each of these oscillators, and then you change the frequency of each of the oscillators? Okay, now you're like, hey Mark, that is an atrocious sound and I'm not using that as a lead in my song. But wait, the cool thing about it is that the way that harmonics work is like every sound is made up of a huge amount of tones stacked on top of each other, just a deafening amount of tones. And if we really want to do something additive, what we do is we back off the frequencies that aren't in tune specifically with fundamental tone you want to use. So if we back these other frequencies off, <laughs> and then bring them back in to very slight amounts. Actually. You 
don't necessarily hear that as a big awful chord now. You hear these interesting frequencies that are existing atop of the note, giving it a different timbre. And that's one of the ways that harmonics works. You can create some really big and interesting sounds. But we're gonna stick with a straightforward setting of having oscillator one and two again. <laughs> and move on to the filter. First of all, let's give it back some of that interesting variation. If you're me and you're an old guy and you love the 70s, you love having portamento. And it's a good thing to do because it has a sort of vocal quality to it. It makes you think more of someone singing a thing. And leads are really, when you get down to the bare bones, it's really a sort of the synthesizer way of giving a human voice to a song. I always add a little bit of glide. You can also, a thing I didn't talk about, change one of the frequencies of one of the oscillators. And you can do the, uh, basically the prog rock thing. So you have those two different frequencies and that adds a little bit of interest, but we're not going to prog out today. So. One of the most traditional things to do with the filter is to just give like envelope amounts to the filter. And you get these really traditional sounds that we all know and love. I love doing that, and it's such a traditional sound, but at the same time, every time you press a note, you get the same articulation. Wow, 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 wow. Now that's great for a bass line in a lot of ways, but we want some more interest. We want change over time. So I would suggest just having the envelope be very subtle, if in there at all. <laughs> and then adding modulation to the filter that causes the filter to vary over time. So in this instance, we can just take you know, a wave out of our modulation source, just basically vary the cutoff in the same way we're varying these other sounds. Now, of course, we're probably gonna wanna back that off a little bit, so I'm gonna use this attenuator here. That's a little too exciting. So you can hear the sound pulsating and changing over time. You don't have a static sound. You have this warm, undulating, constantly changing sound. Now, of course, the last thing we want to do is, you know, give it a nice envelope. I should probably have the filter more open to hear more of what's going on with the oscillator, but this is a Moog filter and it's hard not to just enjoy the deep richness of it. But this has been sort of a basic exploration of the tools that you might use to make orally interesting and a varying lead sound so that you don't get stuck with a sort of static wave shape. So that's just a taste of uh, some of the ways you can make your analog synth have a little more life and vibrance when you're making a lead sound. And thanks for hanging out.